Well, tonight we have we have the, the presence of the drum family down in the parlour where we'll be unveiling um, the portrait of Mara Drum, an absolute legend in Irish Republicanism and, and a true leader. Coming up the International Women's Day is really fitting. The, the portrait of Mora Drum will be going up on the wall in, in the parlour and it's very fitting that in a time when Mora was uh, representing Sinn Féin that you were not even welcome as a Republican or a nicest uh, in the City Hall. Uh, and how far we have come and how much further we still need to go. You know that Belfast is a city for everyone and we have to co completely make Belfast a city of equals and, and we are on the, on the path to doing that. Back in the day, if anybody had told Mara Drum or Jimmy Drum that her portrait would be in the City Hall in Belfast, mm -hmm. she would have thought that we were totally nuts. <laughs> and, uh, you know, but here we are, nuts and all. <laughs> and uh, Richard and Macaulay and I, t to mark Mara's centenary, put together a, a little book. This, so some of you may have seen it or have it, this little book that we put together. And I, I say Jimmy and Maura because in, in my head, the two of them were always interlinked. And when we were putting it together and reading and writing and gathering up all the information, it's only then that I realized what the, really what they had all gone through. And you know, Maura was born just before partition and was very, very conscious. I mean, the border is at the end of the garden. <coughs> and she was very conscious of the intrusion that was into her own place in uh, Killian. And then when she came later to work in Belfast, very conscious of, of, of the effects here. And a friend of mine from County Clare, when he read this wee book, uh, he, he wrote to me, he's a man in his mid-80s. Mid and he, he said, how easy it is to forget what the people of the North had to put up with mm -hmm. from partition until recent times. And I thought that was very, very telling uh, because it is easy because we all go through life and those of us who survive it, you tend to gloss over the hard times and the, the sad times and the bad times and, and so on. That's probably what helps us to survive. But it was, I suppose, really after the pogroms of 69 that, that Mora came into her own. The, the family home was opened up for refugees and local schools were also opened up and uh, Mora and Jimmy were, were heavily involved in the emerging Republican leadership and in the, the entire community response to the events of, of that time and she became a leading critic of the Orange State, as well as of the British Army, and a strong advocate of Irish national self-determination and Irish unity. She became around that time, last Octoron, Vice President of, of Sinn Féin. And she was probably the leading spokesperson for the party, certainly in the North, but especially on the North, because she brought an authenticity to what she was saying. I was on the run for part of that period. I, I used to meet her uh, quite often. Uh, she, she disguised herself with a, a scarf. And uh, I've, I've said quite a few times that after we talked about whatever politics we were talking about, it was like having a meeting with your mama. <laughs> well, she just wanted to know how you were getting on and you lost a bit of weight and you needed your hair cut and all that sort of, all that sort of stuff. The house was regularly uh, raided. Uh, you could say a lot of houses were regularly raided but hers was uh, particularly focused in on because of course she was a, a, the representative of the Republican people, of the risen people of, of this city, city and uh, father field. And she was also vilified by sections of the British media and by uh, British secretaries of, of state. And in 1976, in October, she was shot to death. She was aged 56. She was in the Mater Hospital and un undoubtedly 
those who killed her were acting in collusion with the British forces. I was in cage 11 at the time. I was trying to remember, were you in at the time? No, I didn't. You were out, you were just out. So <laughs> I was in cage 11 at the time and I was, I was on my bunk. I remember it very, very well. I was laying on my bunk. I was writing a piece for Republican News. I had the radio on and they reported that Murrah Drum had been shot dead. And I immediately thought about Mar Mara Og, who was in our Maya women's prison, because she, I presume, would have got the news the same way as me. She, she, she just would have heard it on, on the radio. And at times, Mara and Mara Og were in prison at the same time. The two of them were there uh, together. So this is, you know, only a, a sort of a, an outline. H how do you tell? the essence of a, of a woman who was a Van Ussel, a, a Mamo, a Mamo Moor, who was a, a Van Kelia, who, who was a Chirgrador, a Kamog, a Gael. How, how, how do you wipe all of that together and, 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 and present it? It's impossible to do so. So those of us who know Mora, particularly her family, but will have their own uh, memories of her. Whatever rights we have, whatever entitlements we have, whatever progress has been made, whatever peace we have, whatever equality we have, it's because of people like this woman. Mm -hmm. It would not be possible without Maura Drum. Mm -hmm. So well done, Ardwira, or Amelia Margaret, well done, Tony. <laughs> the main reason why she was killed because she could speak she could rally the people she could defy the British and she is the most instrumental woman ever in Ireland it's, it's just this has been a brilliant evening for us very very special for the family the painting is absolutely amazing Tony just got her to a tea and uh, it was great to see so many of our friends and that coming along. I remember, I think it's very important that um, all our, our martyr dead are remembered. And um, it's been a good, she, was, she would have been 100 in October and Jerry and Richard did a brilliant book about her. And now this has just finished off the, the, the period. She would have been totally amazed because when we were kids, we were never in the city hall. It, it, was, it wouldn't have been one Sinn Féin or anything, never mind what is her 19 now. Absolutely amazing. 